when you decide I am going to pursue what God's got for my life, a persecution will come again. Well, who do you think you are? Well, nobody in our families ever. You need to quit trying to act like you ain't just one of us. Rejoice and be glad because there's a great and effective door awaiting me and there are many adversaries. You will outlive this devil. You will overcome this devil. And in the name of Jesus, you will open a door. In 2009, he's going to play a minute. Let me, let me lay the foundation. 2009, uh, I preached a series called The Necessity of an Enemy. The Necessity of an Enemy. Um, it was not something that I was reading my Bible and preparing to preach. Uh, I was in a class action lawsuit. 252 people were suing me. It was highly public. It was very painful. It was very cruel. And um, I had never been through anything like that. And, uh, and it was the people that I had loved the most that had hurt me the most. And so what you're getting ready to hear is I went on a journey to try to find some sense of what I was going through and why because it didn't make sense. There was no logic. There was no reason. And it was painful. And see, when you do what I do, you better learn how to manage disappointment. Because if you let that stuff poison you, there's nothing worse than a bitter preacher. Because he'll get a microphone and spray his poison all over everybody. And I don't want to be that guy. So I've really believed for years uh, didn't read it in the book, this is just my belief, that people who succeed not at what they're doing, but succeed in life versus those who tend not to, I think really is two things. How they respond to failure and can they manage disappointment. If you don't respond well to failure and you don't learn how to manage the disappointments in your life, you will have a very difficult time being successful. Um, it is not my victories that brought me to any defining moments. It was my failures. And usually the decisions I made at the lowest points in my life were the ones that really pointed the trajectory of the next five to ten years of my life. And so this series is it's the only book I've ever written. Um, I preached it in 2009, and what it was was I was preaching a message, and I was preaching to me. I was trying to pull myself out of a hole emotionally that I was in, because I was so hurt by what was going on. And uh, that's why it's more real. When I've experienced something, I can really preach it. When I'm learning it, I can preach it. But boy, when I've gone through it, I can really preach it. Back then, there weren't as many digital downloads. It was still DVDs and CDs. When this message went public, we sold more DVDs and CDs. I had to expand my production room, and we were literally all day long rolling these things out on hand trucks. A publishing company, a guy heard it and called me and asked me to write a book about it. I wrote the book. We got that book. Where's Jonathan? We got him? All right, fine. We got two down here and one upstairs. Just... Whoever hollers the loudest, give it away to somebody. <laughs> Y'all look like the price is right at the game show. We got one up there. All right, he just got it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the price is right. I'm going to give some, I, order, I told him to order a few boxes of books. Every, uh, this is probably going to take me about eight weeks. I'm going to give some books out each time. Since I wrote that book, I've been through a lot more hell. So you're not getting what's in that book. You're getting the remix. <laughs> I've learned a lot biblically and learned a lot experientially since I've written that book. 
But you'll see as I preach it, it's very dear to me. It was a weird atmosphere in here this morning because there was like great jubilee and misery in the same room because everybody's fighting something and you got to understand they're necessary. Battles are necessary or there's no movement in your life. Okay? So maybe in the next few weeks, you're going through something like me. You can't make sense of it. And it's depleting you and it's wearing you out and it's draining you of your energy and it's a huge distraction. Maybe it's just downright painful and traumatic. There's all kinds of difficulties. But if I can help you make sense of it, I got so many things going off in my head right now. Only fight battles where there's spoils. Don't fight battles where there ain't nothing to win. When there ain't nothing to win, let them go. Because you're going to have to pick your battles. The enemy will give you so many things to fight about, you'll spend 24 hours a day fighting. You got to choose what's worth a fight. Okay? Father, I just ask that you help me to preach clearly with a clear mind, with clear communication. I pray that we receive with open minds and open hearts. And I just ask that, uh, like I always do, that the words that go forth today will last long after this service is over with. We ask you to do that in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Tell your neighbor, here we go. Those of you visiting, we talk to each other at this church. We loud. Hallelujah. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. This is the scripture where the whole crux of the next eight weeks will spring from. The Apostle Paul is expanding. He's evangelizing the whole known world at that time, and there are, there are no cars, no airplanes, no trains, and basically there's no internet. He in person, physically, is going through the known world, and he's starting churches. And then after he gets through starting them, he, go back, he goes back and writes letters to disciple them and nurture them in the faith. That's what your Bible is. It is letters to those churches that he wrote, which the Bible said is God breathed and God inspired. So he wrote as the Holy Spirit told him what to write. If you ever think our world is really crazy, I know everybody thinks that it can't get no worse than it is right now and everybody's insane. Uh, go read Corinthians. Them folks was crazy. He's having to address all types of twistedness, perversion. I mean, he's having to call out incest in the church. Not out there. He's, call, he's calling it out in the room. It's a crazy book. He's having to confront a lot of crazy lifestyles and call them back to the values of their faith. But he's closing out the book in chapter 16, and look what he says. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Doors and adversaries go together. Remember two weeks ago, heaven has windows. Heaven has windows. I don't mean a big window out in Southeast Asia somewhere that God's got a crank and opens it. I'm not, the Bible says that he will open you up, the windows of heaven. You are the windows of heaven. When God wants to get something into the earth, he uses people. If somebody, if your neighbors are going to be blessed, tag, you're the window. If people in the hospital, if people incarcerated are going to be blessed, tag, you're it. You're the window. God has to use people to get heaven into the earth. So while we understand from two weeks ago that heaven has windows, hell has gates. Okay? So evil also comes into the earth through people. Remember what I told you last two Sundays ago? I told you that when the right people enter your life, the right things start happening. When the wrong people exit your life, the wrong things stop happening. Because you've got to examine in your life who is a window and who's a gate. People that draw the best out of you, they are a window of heaven. People that you're around and you always end up doing that same dumb thing, they're the gates of hell. When God wants to bless you, he sends a person. When the enemy wants to curse you, he sends a Watch them people. Turn your neighbor and say, watch them people. You've got to have your antennas up. I'm going somewhere still. So heaven has windows, hell has gates. What did I teach you? Life has doors. 
You didn't know it, but I was laying the framework for this series. Every door is the season to next levels. But the Apostle Paul said, I have a new door, a new season. My life is about to expand, but in front of every door, there's a giant. Okay? So what you've got to understand that whenever you see a new battle spring up in your life, that is an announcement to you that God has used every ounce of your previous season he can use. It's over. He's used everything he can use. And your next season is there in front of you, in front of that door. But between your last season and before your new season, there will be something that stands there trying to keep you out. I want to announce to you, your next level is designed to keep you out. one thing because you are trying to do things right there are people that hate you just for trying to do the right thing when new doors open it is possible that an enemy will present itself into your path in this new series enemies ron carpenter will show you exactly why this is happening and what to do about it we are fighting a new battle you've got haters you've got liars and all of them coming against you rejoice and be glad because there's a great and effective door awaiting me and there are many This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. I'm sure this message will hit home with everybody who's listening. When you talk about enemies in our life, the necessity of an enemy, how enemies promote us, all of the things that you're teaching it's going to hit home. In 09, I had the idea of people are fighting stuff and there's got to be a reason why you fight. You know, what, there's no such thing as God using anything without purpose. Right. So if I'm fighting, why am I fighting and what am I fighting for? Well, this is the redo. 14 years in the making, I've come back out. I've learned a lot more biblically. Unfortunately, I've learned a lot more in experience, <laughs> We've had some experience. and in life too. So we're talking about enemies. You understand? You do have to love your enemies. That's what the heart is for on the branding. But the fact is there are enemies in your life for a myriad of reasons. And I bet you're going to be surprised at what some of them are. This message is beginning that series today. Here's what I want to do though. I want to segue for just a moment into a small thanks to all of you that helped make Ron Carpenter Ministries Absolutely. do what it does. Uh, the fact is, hope I tell them every week, you know, we didn't stop and go to a commercial and we didn't come out here and try to sell them a whole bunch <laughs> of products because we are viewer supported. We're listener supported. And uh, it's been a whole lot of people doing a little bit yeah. that has got us to where we are. And we want to thank you for those of you who have been a part of this family, but invite more people into our circle, especially our wonderful Daystar family, which we've just increased our programming. We want to welcome you. And if you have been blessed and you want to give back, it's easy to do. Whether it's a one-time gift or whether you want to become a monthly partner, say, hey, I'm in this with you. No matter, it doesn't matter which category you Sorry. fall in. This is the special gift that we want to give to you just to say thank you for any amount. Whatever amount God puts in your heart to give, we just want to say thank you. If you already are a covenant partner, you say, but boy, I would love to have all the messages, love to have the whole service. Yeah. Well, you can go in our online bookstore and that and a whole lot more is there. But thank you so much for what you do. Yeah. We're so grateful. We do not take you for granted. And we just want to take time every week to tell you that we're glad we're in relationship with you. There's a Pharaoh that stands between slavery and the promised land, and he's designed to keep you out. 
God said, I've given you a land flow of milk and honey. It's already been promised, but Pharaoh's goal is to keep you out. There walls, Jericho, circled 15-foot thick concrete walls, so thick that chariots could ride on the top of them. It's designed to keep you out. So there's a door, but there's a giant in front of the door. So when one season is over, are y'all happy? Somebody saying, when's he going to sweat? <laughs> preaching ain't sweating. I'm already preaching. Okay? So when you finish one season and you're at the beginning of a new season, you're not in a season of transition. There are people say, well, we're just in a season of transition. No, there's no such thing. Transition is not a season. Transition by its very nature is the span of time between two seasons. And it is usually characterized by being short and very intense. Transition is characterized by being short but very intense. Why? Because there's a giant standing between your last door and your new door. So there's some battle that's going to have to be fought. And if you ignore the giant, you never open the door. Okay? They go together. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 1, I'm going to go all the way to verse 10. And seeing the multitudes, this is Jesus talking, he went up to a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I always thought meek, meek meant weak. I'm like, why are the... Why does God want to bless the meek, you know? Uh, you know, meeks always get their, their butt whooped all the time. I don't want to be a meek, God. The fact is, meek is strength under control. Don't mess with a meek person. They know how to control that strength. They know how to let it out. And these people who have strength under the earth, uh, have strength under control, those people shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Look at all these blessed, blessed. But see, it's not just an offering. There's many places of blessing. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now, here we go. Here's what nobody talks about. And this is going to challenge your thinking. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Look, it gets worse. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely. You're blessed. Well, I don't feel blessed, Pastor. Pastor. They've made me a target. They're coming after me. They're lying about me. This stuff ain't true. I can't say nothing, and I got to bite my lip. I got to hold my peace. But what they're saying, they're lying. They're persecuting me. They revile me. They hate me, Pastor. God says, you're blessed. God said, when they lie on you and they've made a target out of you and they hate you for basically one thing, because you are trying to do things right. There are people that hate you just for trying to do the right thing. When they say, oh, man of evil against you falsely for my sake, for those of you that are trying to do right by people, trying to do right by God, you have chosen to put your life on a different path. I'm not running with you anymore. I'm not going to sabotage myself anymore. I'm getting away from the road that's broad. I'm going through the gate that is narrow, and there are people that will hate you for no other reason than you are trying to do the right thing. Oh, somebody shout amen. Verse 12, now listen to this challenge. Just listen. Rejoice. What? Go back to verse 11. Reviled, hated, persecute. They're engaging that hate, and now they're trying in some way to harm you and lying on you left and right. Next verse. Rejoice. Rejoice. 
and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward. Let me. This is going to change your whole mindset about enemies and about battles. When you are no longer invited to Thanksgiving, you are blessed. When you go to the family reunion and they acting weird to you, you're blessed. When they HR and HR are trying to get you fired, you're blessed. Come on, I'm talking to somebody now. Trying to get you fired. That's when he said you're blessed. What does that mean? Well, you're fighting a new battle. You've got haters, you've got liars, and all of them coming against you. Rejoice and be glad because there's a great and effective door awaiting me, and there are many adversaries. You will outlive this devil. You will overcome this devil. You will take down this giant, and in the name of Jesus, you will open a door. Let me hear it from the people who say, I've been going through hell, but I'm going to rejoice in be exceedingly glad because the announcement of a new challenge is the announcement of a new day. I'm about to run all over this building. Somebody take five seconds and bless his holy. Rejoice and be glad. Hey! Hallelujah. High five your neighbor and say, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. The lazy despise the diligent. The unsuccessful hate the successful. The impure despise the pure. The common hate the uncommon. That's why you're blessed. Amen. Blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are you. It's rearranging what blessing is. We think blessing is when everything's at peace. Plenty of money in the bank. My kids acting like they got some sense. <laughs> peace. That's not where God says the blessing is. The blessing is evident in the fact it is coming against you from every side. <laughs> One of the very first battles I went through, here again, very disappointing, had to manage disappointment. I was in my mid-20s. I, I was raised in a denomination. I went to their youth camps. I went to their schools. I went to, to all their stuff. But it was... So white. <laughs> Good people, but just white. <laughs> and so I left that denomination because I didn't want everybody in the building to look like me. I wanted my congregation to look like heaven. I mean, look around this building. Do I look like I belong with all white? And I'm going to tell you, man, I paid a price. I lost all support. I lost everything undergirding me to help me. I lost financial support to help me get the truth. I lost it all because I wanted to not be another one of the cookie cutter churches. And the common hate the uncommon. The unsuccessful hate the success. When I had 11 members, nobody hated me. <laughs> High 
I would, nobody was suing me. <laughs> Man, you know, when David is herding sheep, nobody's mad at him. But when he slays that giant, Love your enemies. You know, that's a pretty tough uh, thing to do. Spend the rest of our life trying to perfect Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But you know, the only way that you can do it is if you have Jesus in your heart. It's very difficult. Can't give what you don't Yeah, have. to operate in biblical uh, principles when you don't even understand it yourself. You know, Jesus loved us. God loved us when we were the enemy of God. Mm -hmm. When we were separated, when we were in sin, He loved us and gave His Son. So how can you give that if you've not received it? I want to ask you today to receive Jesus into your life. The prayer goes something like this, and it's very simple because salvation is free. Somebody say, well, I need to start this, and I need to stop no. that. Listen, you work out your salvation later. You don't work it out before salvation. You get yeah. saved, and then God will come in, and you'll sort out all the loose ends in your life. He really will. This is a journey that you're beginning today, and the prayer goes something like this. Pray it with me in your heart. Say, I thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price for my sin. I ask your forgiveness. I ask you to cleanse me. I believe you died and rose again that I might be saved. Come live in my heart. I accept your gift of salvation today. Thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful thing we get to do yeah. when we come on the air is lead people to Jesus. Yeah. It's better than the preaching, better than anything <laughs> else we do when a soul and a life is changed forever here and in eternity. So thank you for those of you that made that decision. Write in, let us know. Send us an email, do something, because we want to enjoy this decision that you just made with you. So until next time, I just want to say a huge God bless you, and we will see you again real soon. God said when they lie on you and they've made a target out of you and they hate you for basically one thing, because you are trying to do things right. There are people that hate you just for trying to do the right thing. When new doors open, it is possible that an enemy will present itself into your path. In this new series, Enemies, Ron Carpenter will show you exactly why this is happening and what to do about it. We are fighting a new battle. You've got haters, you've got liars, and all of them coming against you. Rejoice and be glad, because there's a great and effective door awaiting me, and there are many adversaries. You will outlive this devil, you will overcome this devil, and in the name of Jesus, you will open a door. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.